During the summer, I like to switch to Apple's built-in productivity apps, reminders, calendars, and notes. I do this because I wanna see what's changed in the new OS updates that are coming out in the fall. I wanna make sure I'm, I'm you know, staying in the know on what's happening on these apps, but also how they compare to third-party apps. This year, Notes got some killer features. This video is sponsored by Banks and their Infinity Pro iPad stand. Notes is a powerful application, but a lot of that power can be hidden behind menus and buttons. There's also a few rough edges that need to be smoothed out a bit, but overall, it is a really compelling application if you just need a place to just jot down some thoughts or take a note. When getting started with Notes, it's important to have a good organizational system. Notes uses a folder-based hierarchy. I created folders for all the different parts of my life, personal, travel, games, work, administration, research, and projects. In Notes, you can create subfolders by creating a new folder and dragging and dropping it on top of another. You can also manually rearrange these folders as well. I think this is something that gets overlooked a lot. Just drag and drop them to be in the place that you want. Now, when you're creating a note, you can add a title and all the text and stuff you want to it, but you can also put in a tag. You can use these to filter. They will either show the notes that have the tag, or you can tap on that tag again, and it will filter out all of those notes that have that tag. I don't use tags a ton. I'm just not a big tag person, but they are handy if you have like a group of notes that have a common theme, especially if they're saved throughout different folders. I use tags for my yearly theme docs and my OS beta notes. You can also build out smart folders in notes as well. Unlike regular folders, you don't have to manually add notes to these. You use filter to gather notes that match certain criteria. This can include tags, date created or edited, shared, mentions, checklists, attachments, folders, quick notes, pen notes, or even locked notes. You can also set it up so that smart folders either have to match all the criteria you add or just one aspect of the criteria you add. Smart folders are a great way to gather notes stored in different locations, but have a common thread. For example, you could use this to gather up every note you have that has a checklist. This could be a great way to build a pseudo task manager in your notes. Smart folders can be extremely powerful if used properly. In folders, you can obviously sort notes by date created or modified or titled, or you can even reverse the orders of those. But what I do a lot with really important notes that I'm constantly accessing is pin them. Just long press on that note and select pin note. This will keep that note always at the top of that particular folder, or if you go into the general all notes folder, it will stay at the top there as well. When writing in a note, the Notes app supports rich text. Now, what rich text is, is the type of formatting that supports bold and italicized, underline, strike through, titles, headers, and more. It supports that kind of formatting. You've probably seen this in other applications like Microsoft Word or Pages. You can highlight some text and select these options from the menu. You can also pick from the menu and just start typing these texts as well. There's a ton of handy keyboard shortcuts when it comes to formatting rich text. Just hold down the command key and go to the format tab. You'll see all of them there. With rich text, you can make bulleted list formats. You can either use the asterisk key or the dash key to start off these. When hitting enter, it will automatically add a bullet to the next line. You can then hit tab to indent inwards, or you can hit shift tab to go out. Besides bulleted lists, you can make numbered lists as well. When you hit enter, these will just go in a sequential order. It'd be funny if they didn't go in a sequential order. In iOS and iPadOS 17, mono-styled fonts were added to notes. When selecting this, it will put your text in a monospace font and in a code block as well. Now, this is great for saving snippets of code you use often, but don't want to constantly have to rewrite. Like you could just save, you know, code blocks in notes now. But what I also could see this being used for is quotes. If you're, you know, doing a research project or something, you're gathering quotes from all sorts of different sources, you could put these in these monospace code blocks. So that way you can tell, okay, this is the quote and this is my notes on the quote. Kind of a nice way to separate those. This video is sponsored by Banks and their Infinity Pro iPad stand. The Infinity Pro stand is a magnetic iPad stand for the iPad Pro and iPad Air. 
Made out of the same material the iPad Pro is made out of, you get an elegant design that blends well with your iPad. When docking the iPad, the stand you get is an incredibly strong connection, so you know your iPad is in there safe and secure. When the iPad is in the stands, it is completely adjustable. You can tilt the base and the iPad mount as far back or as forward as you want. When tapping on the display, you don't get any wobble at all. That is thanks to the anti-slip grip on the bottom. A really cool feature about this design is when you rotate the stand, it never moves. The base has a ratcheting system that allows you to rotate it 360 degrees. This is great if you have somebody sitting across from you and you need to show them something on your iPad or even just rotating your iPad so it's facing you from wherever you're sitting. The Infinity Pro iPad stand works well for turning your iPad into a workstation. Just pair a keyboard and trackpad and you'll have a full blown desk setup. The Infinity Pro stand even folds up so you can take it with you on the go. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to where you can go check out the Infinity Pro stand. I mentioned already there are checklist in notes. There is a checklist button in the toolbar that you can just hit and it will select that and you could just start writing out your own checklist right there in notes. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Command Shift L to start a checklist as well. Notes has a feature that will auto sort these checklists. So as you mark an item as completed, it will move it down to the bottom, keeping all of the items that still need to be done at the top. Notes has excellent support for different kinds of media. In Notes, you can drag and drop images or videos right into it. You can also use the camera icon and select from a range of media to input. Besides importing, you can also take photos or video, scan text using the live text feature, or you can just scan a document and add it as a PDF. Notes has great support for PDF documents. Love, 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 love this feature. You can scan multiple pages of a document and add it just as one PDF into a note, or you can just drag and drop an already existing PDF right into your doc. Notes also got support for the PDF upgrades that are coming to iPadOS 17, like the autofill feature. Another thing you can do in Notes is links. Of course, you can just simply copy and paste a link from a website, no problem. But you can use the share sheet from Safari or uh, other apps as well, and it will add a rich link card right into your note. But in iPadOS and iOS 17, there is now hyperlinking. Long press and select the option add link. Here you can add a link and label the link so that it blends right into your note. You can also just highlight some text and then select this option to paste the, the link in as well. And if you're typing from a keyboard, you can just hit command K to add a link. But where this gets really interesting is it's not just URLs that you can add into a note for hyperlinking. You can also link to other notes. This, oh, this is my favorite feature. So what I'll do is I link a bunch of notes that are connected together. Like if they're, you know, I'm working on different projects or something and they're lo loosely connected together, I will link those documents together. I also made a launchpad document that displays all of my current projects that I'm working on. And this gives me shortcuts to them so I can just quickly jump to whatever note I need. If you're just wanting to link a note, not wanting to deal with URLs, just linking notes, you could type two greater than symbols from the keyboard and you will get a menu of recent notes. You can start typing to filter these notes or you can just select the one that you want. I love this feature so much. Notes also has support for tables. Now, this isn't exactly like Excel or numbers. These are very basic tables. You can select the more button in these tables and add extra rows or columns if you want. It's nice that Notes has these features, but it would be great if you could add simple formulas to them like sums or divisions. When working inside tables, you can select the table icon and get a few more options. This includes sharing the table and converting the table to text. Now you can share notes with other people and collaborate on that note at the same time. This is a great feature, really handy for those that work on a team or if you wanna share a list with a partner. In notes, you can lock a note that has sensitive information. This way, if you hand your phone or device to somebody and they start poking around, they're not gonna get like, you know, really sensitive information you don't wanna share. I use this a lot because I, film my devices and you know, I like you all, but I don't really want you to have my address. 
I use the built-in notes search to quickly jump around the app. The keyboard shortcut is Command Option F here, but there is some handy built-in search parameters when you activate this that you can select from, or you can just type in the note that you're looking for. It'll search for titles or the content. Speaking of search, if you're not actually in the notes app, you can use Spotlight to search for a note and quickly open it. Again, this is another thing that I do often, especially when I don't have notes open. Spotlight is an incredibly powerful tool. If you aren't already using it, I highly recommend you do. But the biggest feature that keeps bringing me back to using notes is the quick note feature. QuickNote is a built-in windowing feature that allows you to take a note anywhere. Now, there are a few different ways to enable this. You can swipe up from the bottom right corner. If you're using Stage Manager, you have to use the Apple Pencil for this. You can use Globe Q on a keyboard and this will bring up the window. And on both the iPhone and the iPad, you can use a Control Center button. With QuickNote, you can quickly write a note from anywhere in the OS. The note will be stored in a quick note folder. You can also link to whatever is currently on your display to the quick note. This will put a link to that in the note so that when you tap on that link, your device will jump back to whatever you were linking to. This isn't just for web page. You can do this with stuff like mail, calendars, articles, and a lot more. If you go back to the content manually, there will be a box in the bottom right corner. Tap on this and it'll bring up the corresponding quick note. In Safari, you can highlight text and select new quick note. This will add that text to the note. Then when you go back to that page, that same text will be highlighted. Notes is a very capable application, but there's one thing I would really love to see it get, and that is Markdown support. Now, Notes is a rich text app. I talked about what rich text is. I don't think that should change. I, I actually think it should be that way. Markdown is plain text, so you don't see any of that formatting, but you write like underscore a word, underscore it, and it would italicize it, or asterisk, asterisk, a word, asterisk, asterisk, and it would bold it. It's basically shortcuts for making rich text, then it compiles it and renders it as rich text. What I would love to see is kind of like a middle ground between these two. Let me write the markdown shortcuts, but render it in rich text. That would be fine. I mean, if they wanted to go full markdown support, I would be, I'd be super happy with that. But I think a middle ground would be really nice. Notes has come a long way in the last few years, and I really like where it's at. My thanks to Banks and their Infinity Pro iPad stand for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.